Well, well, is that the legendary army of Hoth Mortigor? A little girl with braids? Fabulous. Oh, why so angry, little girl? You're not here to declare war, are you? It would almost make a pleasant distraction, putting your feet up and drinking tea all the time. In the long run, it's not good for my goblin army. But why should I sound the horn for battle? My scouts told me about your lazy companions. You can't possibly think you can defeat my army with those dopes. I hardly think so. As long as we are not being attacked, I'll stick to the advice of this friendly traveler. Wait and see and drink tea. <gasps> Lilligrim was boiling with rage. She was very close to throwing a tantrum, but something was holding her back. Okay, will no one do anything? So drug a lot. Druggle jug? In character, please. Drug? Ugh. Not yet, Lily Grim. The fire should last the whole night. Uh. Hello, Lily Grim. Would you like to be amused by my funny pranks? Then watch me. And are you amused? Cool. I'm not afraid of the goblins, if that's what you mean. I'm not worried about being cut into little pieces by mighty goblin swords. And I'm not bothered by the rumors that they wrap the intestines of their victims around thorny spears. For I am Snippo, the funny prankster of the group. I'm not afraid of the goblins. I don't think about how- For I am s- No matter what you say, you're wrong. The Traveler is a completely harmless companion who has no evil intentions at all. He won't cut our throats once we've gone to sleep. Those kinds of stories belong in the realm of fantasy, not in a fantasy world. Oh. Um. Yes, it doesn't just look like it. I am actually juggling only one ball, and I know how ridiculous that must seem. My character sheet said that I... <clears throat> I, the comical Snippo, have the marvelous ability to juggle 55 balls at once. But as much as I would have liked to imagine what such a thing would look like, the mysterious traveler thought I should just juggle one ball instead, because it's much more contemplative. And as long as my shame or boredom doesn't cause me to spontaneously combust, then I'll stick to that. If you have a better suggestion... Duh. Hmm... Maybe I'd feel a little less stupid if I try it with three balls for a while. <clears throat> On the other hand, I'm a clown called Snippo, and I have a penchant for ridiculous hats. It's probably part of the role that I feel like a moron. You think I should try it without any balls? Bravo! You found the only way to increase my boredom even more. On the other hand, if I juggle without a ball, I might be able to take a quick nap. No one seems to object to sleeping around here. If you plug it up, the cauldron could blow up in our faces! Um... Hello, Lilligrim. You're still up? You should get some rest. I'll keep guard and make sure the fire doesn't go out. <laughs> Don't look so grim. Your thirst for action is honorable. 
But the mysterious traveler is right. Strength lies in tranquility. Lilligrim felt like screaming at the brave Sir Drogalot. She hadn't traveled all the way to Goblin Gorge just to sleep. But something kept her from losing her temper. Fuming, she turned away from her companion. Her eyes fell on the quiet traveler who had listened to the entire conversation. Was that a smile she saw beneath the hood? Is that a crystal ball? Well, I've got fortune telling plus ten. No, Petra. It's just an ordinary ball. Um, don't startle me like that. Can't you see I'm watching the kettle? Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm brewing a diabolical magic potion, of course. Well, it's actually a calming tea. I really wanted to conjure some coffee demons, but they don't let you get any sleep. And we do need our strength for the battle. Now I have to watch the kettle before it starts to whistle. The traveler has such sensitive ears. <coughs> um, don't you want to sleep? Uh-uh. I wonder why. Because I'm really exhausted. Oh, if you're staying up anyway, do you think you could watch the kettle? Uh-huh. Oh, great. Then I can finally get some sleep. As you know, we need our strength for... Oh, 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 the... Oh, oh. Go ahead and lie down. I'll make sure that the fu- Are you as tired as I am? You try to roast the ball over the fire. It takes a while. It's Peter's turn. What? But Snipple's already asleep. Ah, yes. Roasting the ball it didn't do anything. Remove three points of stamina. Good! The ball was stuck, but the pressure in the cauldron still wasn't enough for something to happen. You try putting the logs on the fire. Roll for sneak and hide, so Sadrugalot doesn't wake up. Done! The logs were in the fire. The child, what are you doing? This noise can't possibly be good for the group harmony. Without wanting to rush you, Maybe now is the time for controlled, well-considered action. If you proceed with the required calm, I'm sure you'll be able to defuse the situation before there's a disaster. Uh-uh. I really must insist you stop making that sound. Can't you see that you're threatening to destroy the idyllic calm? Declared war on us! Sound the horn! <sighs> that sound. I have to keep calm. <sighs> Enough! I can't take it anymore! This noise is driving me crazy! I'm losing control! Two arms! Finally, the fun part of the role-playing game began. 
The group stormed the battlefield with no restraint. They were led by Lilygrim, who furiously swung her berserker sword in circles. And as the dice rolled in the institution, so did the heads of goblins in Hoth Modigor. It seems it is a good idea to occasionally vent your rage. It was a short battle. The goblins were powerless against the fury unleashed by the group. The plans of the Goblin King were thwarted. Lilligrim found the defeated monarch cowering beneath one of the support beams of the dam. Lily, poor foolish Lily, that was a terrible mistake. Lilligrim was still wondering what he meant when she heard an ominous crack above her. When the pink floods had subsided, our heroes were faced with an incredible sight. The Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Will you look at that? I have to admit, I'm really blown away. We shouldn't be here. Ha! <laughs> You've always been quite the comedian, Snippo. No, I mean it. This valley is cursed. I heard that. Wait a second. Lily? What's wrong with her? I'm sure you can imagine how she felt at that moment. You can't? Oh well. Who knows what really goes on in the mind of a little girl. You feel alright, little girl? <coughs> little girl? Hello? Mm, uh, are you okay? I was worried, you know? Am I crazy, or did it just get colder in here? The door was firmly locked. Lily had probably broken it for good. Lily decided to pick the lock using and yet again, Lily proved her incompetence. What a sh- Lily just didn't have the skills. You? That's so depressing. I'm supposed to award experience points to improve a talent. Expressive dance, Making music, lock picking. I don't actually want to be able to do any of those things. Isn't there a talent such as accepting one's fate or assigning experience points without experiencing an existential crisis? Peter's dithering made Lily furious. Couldn't the notorious whiner make even the most basic decisions? Lily would have liked to smack him across the face, but something held her back. Oh, mm. you're right. I'll just increase pick locks, and that's it. 
fair. Why don't you just hold on to the character sheet? I don't want anything to do with it anymore. It sounded crazy, but she now actually had the skill to pick locks. Done. The gate was open. She wondered if... It was true. She'd opened the real gate during her trance. The path to the asylum's tower was now free. Somewhere in the dark uncertainty, there she would find her friend. Without really thinking about it, Lily took the stuffed rabbit with her. If she was going to enter Dr. Marcel's realm, she didn't want to do it alone, like she usually did. The door was firmly locked. Lily understood the principle of locks and keys, even if it sometimes appeared otherwise. What an ugly boy. Why someone would put up a picture like that baffled Lily. Lily could stare at the moon for hours, but she didn't like it. Terrible things tended to happen. Awkward. Lily had destroyed the termite farm. Leave me alone. I'm a hopeless case. Father was right. Yes, you heard correctly. I'm Reuben, Dr. Marcel's secret second son, Alfred's older brother. Lily didn't know who Alfred was, but she still thought it was appropriate to catch her breath in shock. We were supposed to have the perfect upbringing. Pops thought traditional methods were inadequate. That's why he began developing his own, while Alfred responded to his practices. I developed conspicuous behavior. I was a failed experiment. Pops was so disappointed that he kept me in the asylum cellar, hidden from the outside world. Alfred, on the other hand, was presented as a shining example of his parenting methods. I never had a chance to make him proud of me. Since Alfred died, everything just got worse. I'm invisible to him. A ghost, a bad dream. The strange circumstances surrounding Alfred's death showed him that childishness is a disease that needs to be eradicated. I should have died back then. If I could only see my brother one more time, I never got to say goodbye to him. Oh. It's him! <laughs> it's my brother, Alfred. Oh, Alfred. I still have so much to tell you. Oh, it's him! <laughs> it's my brother, Alfred. Oh, Alfred. I still have so much to tell you. It wasn't a good place to hang that up. As long as the clothes rack didn't have a head, the sheet only loosely hung on it. Somebody had left their lunchbox. That would never happen to Lily. She didn't have a lunchbox. The narrator was slowly losing interest in coming up with motives for Lily's action. The truth of the matter was, no one knew what she was doing and why. On top of the clothes rack, the bowling ball looked like a skull. But something was missing. Lily shuddered. Suddenly there was a ghost in the storeroom. What's that? A ghost? Hey, listen here. If anybody's gonna do any haunting here, it's me. Beat it. If you see Alfred, <laughs> tell him to haunt round this way sometime. I never got to say goodbye to him. Huh? 
Noteworthy, the termites scarfed all the pancakes and ate a hole through the door in the process. Something was hanging there. Lily had learned one thing. The ideas that the moon place in her head almost always ended with some sort of punishment. Lily understood the principle, even if it's some... The frame was roughly the same size. Lily had learned the idea... What's that? A ghost? Hey, listen here. If anyone's gonna be haunting around here, then... Wait, wait a minute. Alfred? Alfred, it's really you. I... I can't believe it. Oh, Alfred. I never got to say goodbye. <laughs> and I have so much I still want to tell you. Where to begin? Oh, yeah. I know. You lousy, dirty toad! Because of you, I've lived my whole life in a stinking sewer! Just you wait. You disgusting, slimy toad! If you weren't dead already, I'd wring your neck now! Lily thought it was best not to disturb the phantom. It should take all the time it needs to say goodbye to its brother. The door was firmly locked. The door was firmly locked. Lily! Oh, thank goodness. We were so worried that they had gotten you too. The doctor has completely lost his mind. He wants to turn us all into mindless puppets. Just look at what he's done to Mother Superior. Oh, hello, Lily. Nice to see you. But what are you doing here? In the middle of the night. Did the other students make you do this? They are such naughty children. You, on the other hand, were always so good. So good. I'm sorry that I was always so strict with you. But now, thanks to Dr. Marcel, I'm a good child too. Come, Lily. Sit down. You can help me. Embroider the dolls for the doctor. Just ignore her. Please concentrate on finding a way to get us out of here. We have to split before the doctor... Uh-oh. <laughs> I finally caught you. I was hoping you'd show up here. I can use all the help I can get to speed up production of my hypnosis dolls. Soon, I'll be delivering them across the entire world. And then, naughty children, will become the stuff of fairy tales. Once I've subjected you to my improved hypnotherapy, nothing can stop me. <laughs> Wuggy! Lily? What are you doing here? This is my trance! Mm. What's that supposed to be? A challenge to a fight? Defense measures initiated. Demons in defensive positions. I'm expecting a fair fight. Stick to the rules. Oh dear. 
where had Lily ended up now? It looked as if she would have to use all the skills she had won back to now win this battle. You must not contradict the dogs. You must not lie. You must not play with fire. You must not use sharp objects. You must not touch alcohol. You must not hang around dangerous places. You must not lose control. And you must never follow your own wishes. But... <laughs> You can't beat me in my own trance! It had already been sewn. You must not use sharp objects! It had already been sewn. Lily hesitated. Usually she waited until Mother Superior was gone before she rummaged through the garbage. But Lily was running out of options. But what was that? Were they... Eyes? Lily had an idea. She knew she couldn't sew very well, but maybe it was good enough to give Harvey back his old eyes. However, something was missing to implement this plan. Lily had an idea. She knew she couldn't sew, but maybe it was good enough. However, perfect. Lily now had a needle and thread. Lily had, she knew she couldn't sew very, but maybe it was good. She made her first stitch. Lily hesitated. She'd often been told that she wasn't very good with the needle and thread. But what did she have to lose? She was just going to have to chance it. What are you doing? Stop that. You're hurting me. You must not use sharp objects. You have. You have. No. Have to scratch my fuzzy butt. <laughs> I'm back! <laughs> I can hardly believe it! I'm my old self! <laughs> Harvey? Is it really you? <laughs> and there's... there's Edna! Come on! Go, go, go! Let's set fire to something! And fly to the moon! Just so we can eat it up. Go for it, Lily. What are you waiting for? Let's tear this joint apart. Yippee! You have to get us free, Lily. I think Mother Superior has a knife to cut the threads. Unfortunately, she can't use it while she's hypnotized. Could Lily help Mother Superior overcome her mental blocks this way? Shaking, she pulled the string. Hmm? Hey Lily, you're here too. Cool. What's that? Some kind of fight? Less talking. More fighting!
No, it can't be, you damn rabbit. You were supposed to make sure she would stick to the rules. She can't just do whatever she wants. Of course. Riot! But we need rules. Otherwise... Otherwise... <laughs> Mother Superior's behavioral blocks had been removed. Had Lily made a mistake? Was Mother Superior once again as strict and vindictive as before? But even as Lily thought about such things, Mother Superior started weeping uncontrollably. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. I'd completely forgotten what it's like to be a child. All the unfair rules. <laughs> All the restrictions. <laughs> oh, Lily. What have I done to you all? Bravo, Lily. Now we have her where we want her. Take the knife from her so you can finally cut us loose. Mother Superior was unresponsive. How could Lily take the knife from her while she was crying so hard? <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? Do you think I could hold it? But, 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 but Lily, what are you up to? Do you really want to give me to Mother Superior? I mean, she could do with a bit of pizzazz in her life, from the looks of it. But I thought the two of us are friends. We could try so many things. Come on, let's light a few things on fire. Or talk with Edna. Or build something crazy out of different stuff. Or, or... Do you really want to give me to Mother Superior? Uh-huh. Really? Really? Uh-huh. Uh, oh, Lily. Uh, how can I ever make this up to you? I'm sure you want something to make up for it, don't you? <coughs> Unfortunately, this knife is all I have. Do you think it would be enough? Uh-huh. Wonderful. Uh, thanks for everything. Well done. If you carry on like this, I can imagine hiring you as a deputy someday. Or I could hire you as a cosmonaut's assistant, which is even cooler than a deputy. Whatever. Just please, cut us loose, fast. Then we'll figure it out. I've already come up with a plan. I'm sure you know the story of the girl who ran away from Dr. Marcel's asylum long ago? The same girl that pushed him down the stairs that same night? Well, I never told you this, but... That girl was me. What a surprise. Yeah, and that's why I know my way around here so well. Behind the cushion over there is the famous ventilation shaft that I used for my escape back then. We'll be free in no time at all. We'll have to get past Dr. Marcel's office first, but, um, Lily? Is something wrong? Come on, Lily, cut us loose. Uh-uh. What's going on? You're not going to do something stupid, are you? Lily? Where are you going? Lily! Lily! Are you sure that's what you want to do? <laughs> Excellent. I knew right away that you're dangerous. The other children, those were accidents. But now, 
You're here with a sharp knife, ready to kill a helpless old man. You might feel well, but the truth is, you're sick. Very sick. You need my help. You don't believe me, do you? You think you're doing all this for Edna's sake. Oh, Lily. There's something you should know about your friend. She doesn't exist. There was a girl called Edna once. You probably once heard about her. But the girl that you know is nothing more than a figment of your imagination. An attempt to escape your friendless life at the convent. You think I'm lying, right? Because there's someone else who can also see Edna. Let me guess. A priest, perhaps? No. A policeman, right? The manifestation of a higher authority. When you thought that Edna was in danger, your subconscious invented him, too, to legitimize defying Mother Superior's rules and helping your friend. Just ask her yourself. They're here. They're a part of you, Lily. Oh, Lily, I'm sorry. The doctor's right, Lily. You're just imagining us. Now put the knife away. The game is over. Wonderful. <laughs> Finally. You see the truth. All the reasons that brought you here in the middle of the night, armed with a knife. None of them were real. Now put the knife on the desk. I'll hypnotize you immediately. Only my therapy can heal you. Unfortunately, he's right, Lily. Don't do it. Put the knife away, Lily. Be a good girl and do what you're told. Lily was close to tears. She had only just learned not to always do what she's told, and now it was supposed to be all wrong? While the others were talking to her, another voice kept getting louder. A voice that told her, Continue. Continue. Don't do it. Continue. Don't do it. Don't do it. Continue. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. The others were right. Lily was apparently sick. She wasn't capable of deciding what was right or wrong. So she set the knife aside and began her therapy. Dr. Marcel had won. Maybe this wasn't the happy end you were expecting, but the moral of the story is you must always do what you're told. Always. Without exception. The end. Lily had no intention of undergoing therapy. She'd never felt so free before. She could decide for herself what was right and wrong. Slowly, she raised the knife. No. Lily! No! No! Maybe this wasn't the happy end you were expecting. But the moral of the story is... You can do whatever you want, as long as you keep your free will. Even if it means stabbing an old man in a wheelchair to death. The end. away. Do what you're told. Stop. Continue. Don't 
Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't Put do it. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. Stop. Continue. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't Put do it. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. Stop! Shut up already! Very good, Lily. Let him have it. That goes for everyone! You've just been bossing me around this whole time! Lily, do this! Lily, do that! But get this! I'm not your lap dog! And you, Doc, if you want to hypnotize me, you'll have to learn how to walk first! Because that's what I'm gonna do now! Your therapy is garbage! Why don't you worry about yourself, Grandpa? Lily kept wailing until she was hoarse. Finally, exhausted yet relieved, she started heading back. For the first time in her life, she was doing what she herself thought was right. Maybe this wasn't the happy end you were expecting, but the moral of the story- and you 